Hello, it's Mr. O'Mara here and I'm talking about your language analysis task again. This is one of the hardest things to get your head around, um, but also one of the things that examiners reward, um, and it is the tone of the piece. Now, I guess you're all probably used to the idea of tone of voice, that the way that we speak, whether we kind of use a gruff, you know, serious tone or a light, playful tone, or, you know, if we're being sarcastic and gee, isn't that good? You can hear that in the voice, but it is in fact possible to do that on paper too. It's not only possible, but in fact people do it all over the place. So you want to be able to identify the tone of the piece. Now, there are literally hundreds of words, and in VCE, in Year 12 particularly, we'll give you what's called a tone bank, and go through so that you can use this large list of words to describe tone, because there are in fact a lot of different tones. I made the point earlier that contention is either, you know, you're either for something or against it, but tone is not so simple. So I'm going to give you a couple of very basic examples here. So. One of the very common ones in editorials and letters to the editor is an outrage tone. You know, where somebody is working themselves up into a state about a particular issue. And this is also very similar to an angry tone. You know, something's dreadfully wrong here and I'm writing to complain about it and make you aware of it. So that's one of the very easy tones to spot. Um, so, for example, locals cannot believe that McBuckler's made such an irresponsible and selfish decision. You know, it's really kind of beating the drum of, oh, isn't this dreadful and I'm so angry about it. So that could be described as an outrage tone or an angry tone. Um, but there are a whole lot of other words. And this is one of the few situations I would say that a thesaurus is actually a good thing to have. To look for some other words and think, does that match it better? As always with the thesaurus, don't use a word that you haven't heard before, because a whole lot of the meaning of English words is much more complicated than what turns up in a dictionary or a thesaurus. But if you see another word that you think matches what the writer's doing, by all means use it. Um, you can also use a mocking or sarcastic tone. You know, so that you might say, you know, good work, McBuckle. Our town had to spare $25 million and now you've found a useless bridge to spend it on. You know, you can also go for that tone. So, you know, that's also a negative tone, but it's not being angry. It's being sarcastic or mocking. And when I say mocking, we're kind of making fun to undermine something. That's what I mean by mocking. On the other side, you can, of course, have a sympathetic tone or a positive tone. Um, and you see this, although not as much, most, um, most opinion pieces are trying to persuade you that something is bad, but sometimes they're in favour of things. And so that's, you know, that's the writer being encouraging. So, McBuckle has made a tough decision that will benefit all of us here in town. That's a supportive tone, or an encouraging tone. So, have a read through. It's probably a good idea to kind of read it through to yourself in your own head. In an exam situation, of course, you can't read it out loud. But even if you just basically, you know, just play the tape in your head and listen to it and think, what would this sound like if someone was saying to it? And what someone was saying this to me? What would their tone of voice be? What do the word choices suggest to me? Um, you know, what's the emotion behind this? And that's how you talk about tone. Um, there aren't you know, there's not an exactly right answer, but this is a good place to show off that you've got a good vocabulary and that you've got a good ear for what things sound like when they're, you know, what the written word sounds like when it's said. So that's tone. We'll do more about this in class, but that's the quick version.